Joining us now is Audrey Kajini Tsokwe with stories trending around the world. I don't want to go the whole stretch. But that was a good introduction. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Very well. How are you this morning? Good, Audrey. Missing Dr. Abati. Good morning. Yes, yeah. How are you? I'm good. Very good good morning. morning. Fantastic. Well, all right. Well, let's begin what's trending. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Wednesday assured Nigerians that the nation would survive the current economic hardship in the country and took full responsibility for the adverse outcomes of his policy reforms. The president made the comments when he addressed Afeni Fera leaders at the residence of Pa Ruben Fashoranti in Akure Undo State. Tinubu was in Akure to pay a condolence visit to the family of the late Rotimi Akire Dulu, former governor of the state. Tinubu told Aferni Ferrer leaders that his administration is working to ensure that Nigeria is reformed for greater efficiency and that he is leading Nigeria towards economic and social prosperity. I wanted to make sure that I read out what uh, Tinubu said. I believe yeah. Ajurin Gilali released a statement yesterday. So let's pull up some of um, his statements there. Well, he wrote, Nigeria will survive the current economic challenges there is light at the end of the tunnel. I requested the job and I am not complaining about it. I take full responsibility. We are meeting our obligations to the international community, to lenders. We have not defaulted and we are not going to default. We are navigating the twists and bends on the road to Nigeria's prosperity. The economic challenges we have endured since assuming office are not new to me. As the former governor of Lagos State, I faced similar calls for my resignation. But through perseverance, Lagos emerged as the fifth largest economy in the entire continent of Africa. We must manage this moment with wisdom and grow Nigeria responsibly. Well, in the meantime, a video showing President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's convoy when he arrived in Lagos on Wednesday has made the rounds on social media eliciting reactions in the wake of economic hardship protests that rocked the nation. looks like a reduced convoy, like the ones that we have seen in the past. Uh, Rufai, <laughs> always smiling. But I actually really liked uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's statement yeah. about saying that he, you know, it is his duty, he chose the job, and he knows what he's facing, and, you know, somewhat apologizing for the, you know, hardship that we are facing at this moment. Mm. Yes. Yes. Report. We see the we see the convoy there. Uh, we see the convoy there. Yeah. So it, it speaks volumes. Uh, but uh, let me let me even make an excuse for President okay, Tinubu this morning. Uh, let's let me make a very funny excuse and say, oh, it's not only his convoy. There are people that join him, but is it today? Is it today we see convoys like this? This was not the same convoy he took to a mosque on Lagos Island. People were shouting, "He being pami." He being power. So when people are seeing this kind of convoy so much like this and for the man yesterday that was comparing nigeria and the uk and saying oh foreign leaders who take their children on foreign trips abroad hope you see can you compare this convoy with that of the british prime minister okay. when they are going to westminster can you compare the convoy or don't we see the british prime minister when when the british prime minister is moving they have this number of convoys. so you see, it's the wrong signaling. You say you want to cut cost of governance. People are seeing this kind of convoy. You are not taking the cuts yourself. You are saying one thing, you are doing another thing in return. You say, okay, we are cutting the list to 20. We are seeing 38 people on the list. We haven't seen a luggage man there. I'm like, really? Right. Luggage man. Special person that is always luggage. <laughs> you, well, know. you expect the president to take it, carry his own luggage? Rufai, come on now. The president can't. <laughs> well, I guess you're asking so, what is the. Um, so, so, so you have a special luggage, luggage man yeah, there to carry luggage. Well, his sons could help him since they're going on the trip. With uh, so, no, his sons, maybe they have their own luggage people there. 
So you see the level of waste. The problem, what we need to cause is, is the waste in government. Mm -hmm. That's why all this, why we, we keep bloating our recurrent. There's so much waste. There's so much waste. Mm -hmm. That's what we see. So with this, we are not surprised. We know our lives will be hampered for today. There's going to be traffic everywhere as usual and all of that. But we wish them well. Yeah. We wish them very well. They should just do right for the Nigerian people. We yeah. just want to see more. Absolutely. We just want to see more. I, and at least, you know what even shocks me the most? Right, go ahead. In that convoy, I might be wrong, but I didn't see one innocent or not car there. Toyota, yeah, I, I, Toyota, really Toyota, 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 I'm counting you, Toyota, 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 where's the innocent, where's the innocent, where's the nod, where's the innocent, where's the innocent, where's the nod, if those hundred cars, you bought them from innocent, yes, We'll have seen the effects. Yeah. We need to see changes. Japan, we Japan, see Japan, changes. Japan, quick Japan, Japan, yeah, Japan, Japan. I tried to count the car, cars, there were about 30 of them, yes. more than 30 of them. But you know, the irony of poetic injustice is if you look on the other side of the road, where yeah. he has clear, <laughs> it is traffic um, back to back, bumper to bumper, cars on the other side. And it is a reality and a reflection of the center of excellence, whereby we still are plagued with the traffic situation and also the hardship on I the people. I heard drive for five hours. For five hours. Well, yesterday, Third Milan Bridge was closed for 24 hours, so that exacerbated the challenge. Perhaps they didn't plan that as well very well. If you knew the president was coming, which already is a traffic instigator, then you shouldn't maybe plan to close Third Milan Bridge as well on the same day. Mm -hmm. But let me go back to the statement made by the president. And like you mentioned, and I said this earlier, I think it's a good show of leadership mm -hmm. to be able to acknowledge a challenge or a problem and take ownership of the problem. Yes. What we've seen in, in the past is a lot of passing of the buck, passing the buck. Oh, it's the previous administration. He has said that in the past. But at least this time he said, I understand. But when he said that, oh, the foreign regulators are paying, when I said, you're not the president of the foreign world, your people, the foreigners might be happy, IMF, World Bank might be praising you, yeah. but your people who elected you or the people whom you're yeah. meant to serve are, are crying, are yeah. suffering. And so at the end of the day, he's not campaigning any longer. He's now governing. Yeah, the but you also stops made that him. point about not defaulting on the loan. On the loan, so, yes. I mean, I thought that was quite Yeah, so that, I mean, like, there's some at, good let's things. Let's look at that as there's well. There's some good things he we said. Should. He's acknowledged right. it. So good, but please still say that there's still a lot of people suffering and we need to address that. I think I that's like very that. important here. Yeah. I like that. We'll take another story. As the conversation around the dollarization of Nigeria's economy takes center stage owing to rising inflation, a list of Bureau of the Change operators with unusual names have surfaced online. Well, in 2006, the CBN decided to sell cash directly to BDCs as part of a liberalization program to ensure adequate supply to the sector. At the time, there are less than 100 operational BDCs in Nigeria, with weekly sales of less than $30 million. However, according to the CBN, the number of BDCs stands at 5,690. Well, here's a review of some of the unusual names. I mean, this was circulating on social media. I, uh, I had to pick some of them, which I thought were ridiculous, really. What, what is Deep Freezer BGC? I mean, look at that. Then they have a home alone, and, and they have a couple. But, you know, I, I felt like it was quite weird. Like, we saw happy ends. Is that happy ends or happy hour? And then there's <laughs> Honeymoon BDC. We also had Home Alone BDC. But this is quite ridiculous. It's quite absurd. Because, you know, if you recall, um, uh, Godwin Mefele had, you know, tried to, you know, close the ranks on these uh, BDC yeah. operators saying that they are really causing the dollarization of the economy because some of them have they are multiple and they yeah. own you know they are able person to act the same to. person back back to back having the same access to those FX rates. But I thought this was a funny story. It's to a pull funny up. story and yeah. it just shows that these people think that it's only joke. Yes. And at the end of the day, they don't even they, they don't even take the effort or the, they don't take the time to even come up with creative names to show yeah. that they're a legitimate company. What has happened with that opening of the policy with the, um, the previous CBN? governor yeah. to have the CBN sell directly to the BDC so that they also can be, um, they can play in the foreign exchange market and also sell further right. and sell to people, is that people started 
coming up with ridiculous organizations yeah. or called BDCs, and the same promoter could have like 10, 20 to be able to, because they get an allocation from the firm, from the CBN, right. to be able to get as many um, as much allocation as possible, and then dollarize. And this is this is what promotes. A lot of corruption in that in that space. Right. We've talked about round um, tripping. We've looked at how um, it's just a it's just racketeering. People just taking money, and the if, and unfortunately, it has consequences on the economy. You've talked about the dollarization of our of our country, whereby everybody now is it, it's we, we are almost running a dollar denominated um, um, country in Nigeria. I believe that the CBN is the one that licenses these BDCs, and what has been complained about is that the numbers are now even because I mean, too many for there to be a proper oversight of these BDCs. And that's why we find ourselves in this conundrum that we have with foreign exchange. Of course, not the um, only um, uh, you know, contributory factor, but I think it's time to sanitize and in terms of regula regulation, the BDCs. Absolutely. Let us cut out this nonsense. Look at um, um, 14th February. Was he feeling high on Valentine's Day when he named you? I mean, just ridiculous. But it shows how they've taken this as a joke. Yes, they and they are joke. playing with the economy, the Nigerian economy, and turning it into a farce, into an absolute joke. The onus is on the um, CBN to get their acts together and yeah. really clean up and sanitize and let us know who we have, how much money is being allocated so that we, we have a grasp on this on the issue around for, 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 uh, Forex and the BDCs. All right, I like that. Oh, Did you want to say Yeah, I want to say something. With due respect, right. I mean, this is also a reflection of the paddy paddyism. My brother, yeah. my brother, so come, we'll give you BDC license. But, Oji, should I tell you the truth, honestly? Mm -hmm. It didn't start with the BDCs. It started with the banks. This is what the banks were doing in the late 80s. That's why you saw there was a proliferation of banks. At some point, there were close to 100 banks in this country. What were they doing? They'll get forex, they'll sell forex in the markets, and they'll make the rebates. They were not lending to the real economy. So the BDCs today is just another iteration of what the banks used to be back in the days. Mm -hmm. And that's just how the country is cycled. So as long as there's special interest. You see, the biggest problem in Nigeria is all these funny names you're seeing on BDC lists. It's just a reflection of the special interest mechanism that works in this country. So as long as there's special interest, don't worry. Probably we, to one day, when we have somebody close there, we can just set up uh, Rufai Ayo and OG BDC. No, that's even too, we, that's even too serious. Because if you look at the names there, okay. none of them are serious. Okay. <laughs> Some are serious. Like two Rice and beans. Rice, Rice and beans. beans. <laughs> we, we, we will just say, we will just say <laughs> crude oil and gas. No, crude oil, oil and gas. Crude oil and gas. And Ayomi <laughs> and Rufi on fire and, BDC. And, and what are we Come doing on to get? Now, uh, really? Probably at the end of every day, they just be giving us, uh, we'll get allocation about $20,000. Yeah, 20, dollars. Then we know what we probably do. Unfortunately, we can save really. it and, you know, you know really. how it goes in this country. Well, Most right. people have made money. Most people hire up there and have made money from this forex. Yeah. We should stop deceiving ourselves. Mm. Well, all right. We'll take another story. Social media is awash with reactions following the inauguration of the 188 megawatt geometric power plant in Aba, Abia State to accelerate power supply to industrial clusters in the region. The power plant has been described as the first integrated electricity facility in Nigeria and the biggest investment in the southeast zone of Nigeria with an estimated investment of $800 hundred million dollars since its inauguration there's been steady power supply light choke i'm back to the world <laughs> light choke see, see how many days now it says ac everywhere does a chill everywhere they chill what's the person won't give her less what's it now we go there enough eh what's it Abego, this light there is just a tutorial me, they tutorial me, they go. <laughs> Lights, it choke. Well, all right, that's a video that has been trending on social media, but also you saw those images that were circulating on uh, social media. There's been steady power supply, but, uh, you know, Rufa, you were saying that you're not even she's sure just, that they've been... So what she's doing is just done, cruise. Yeah, so, <laughs> she's just I love the yeah so what, once you lost, yes. lost your power station, there are many things that goes into its functionality and sustainability. Mm -hmm. We had Sam Amadi, and thank God we had Sam Amadi just mm -hmm. before the show that knew so much about and he said it. 
you need a lot of functionality, transmission, gas, yeah. transmission, transmission and everything, connection, distribution of the lines, you know, yeah. many things involved. So this person is just playing cruise to shock other but they're people. They're showing the excitement. They're, they're showing, showing the excitement. Really, that's which really is, what it is. Which is good. Is that, which is I'm, good. I'm, 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 I'm which is good. But yeah. because of that. We need to be yeah. careful mm -hmm. about excitement in this country. Okay. So that some people will not tell us mechanical completion like uh, some months ago after they said they want to sell that same refinery and all of that. And uh, some people have said, okay, we've had enough, we've gotten enough crude oil, uh, we're going to sell it to the market at this time. So that it, until when you start seeing it, you know, keep it on the right because many things you still have to go on. Every power station needs a feedstock. How are they sure of a sustainable, you know, gas production? Yeah. It's not, and this is not the first time I'm going to have independent power, you know, projects in the country. We've, we've got some. But, you know, have they had their first crisis? Have they had their first gas leak? What's the most? And I'm sure Sam Mamadi did, you know, report. So that person, she's just cruising. You know? <laughs> well, let, me, let me just say something. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The country is tough. Yes. When let you anyone see who something. wants to cruise and be excited. Absolutely. I think the prospect of what the launch of that power plant brings, especially for the people in Abia State, is enough to elicit a celebration. It's good. Yes. So yes. It, it, we congratulate the yes. Abia State government. Um, Governor Alex Otibo, I must mention, I wasn't, he, he didn't start it. Yeah. But we've talked about government being a continuum. So from 2004, during the Ojus or Kalu administration, and it, kudos to Professor Bath Naji, mm -hmm. who has been you know, spearheading this, and also Afrexin Bank, mm -hmm. um, who gave a, a seed cap of $50 million yes. financing investment in this project. And just to talk about what the possibilities that exist when you have good leadership and private and even the private sector, people who believe enough and have a vision as to the possibilities that can happen in a nation like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to the people of Abia State. Please throw a party. And more than that, hold your government to account to ensure that you see the completion of this phase of the of the work. Well said, Ayo. Well, all right, we'll take another story. This time under entertainment. The Minister of Art, Culture and Creative Economy. Hanatu Musangwa has confirmed that her ministry is in talks with the organizers of American Grammy Awards with an aim to establish an African version of the prestigious award show. The minister made the comments during an interview with the Vanguard newspaper against the backdrop of some industry players who have criticized the move, expressing fear it could jeopardize the hard-end progress and unique cultural identity of African music. The minister also stated that Nigeria, being the home of Afrobeats, must be counted among the founding members of African Grammy. Fire, you are shaking your head too it's much. Not that due respect to the okay, minister. Go ahead. This is a clear case of very misplaced priority. Okay, why do you say so? And I'll tell you why. Yes. We have local awards here. We have the Headies. Mm -hmm. We have Sound City Music Awards. We have many other awards. Why don't you coalesce them? or help them to scale to global standards. Mm -hmm. You are going to take a foreign brand that has already grown over the years and give them an outshoot on the African continent yeah. where most of the glory goes back to the Grammys. Mm -hmm. Make your own local award international. Mm -hmm. Talk to Ayuani Mashaun. Mm -hmm. Call them Obi Azika. Call uh, Tajudin Adekwetu of San City. Yeah. Say, how can we make Sound City Awards global? Even if you want to extend to the African continent, you have uh, this one that is currently going on. They invited at the early stages of this award. Amma. No, no, Amma is no the, this one on the ad that celebrates African music. There's Kora. Indigenous, but me, I will, before you even go Kora, I will say, okay, here. Make it with all the glitz and glamour right. that is internationally distributed. You see, let me. What, what's making Grammy great? International distribution. You know, I like your point, and that is the you point guess. a lot of people have said. But so, we also have to understand that the world is a global village. I don't see anything wrong with having an African Grammy. I think that we can all collaborate. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Oh, and yeah. If it's something oh, that yeah, will I'm bring sorry. investment into it the will country, not bring investment. Will, you, 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 you will benefit more than you, know, but, but you, more than you can say that. There are so many things that come uh, with a, a Grammy okay. Award show. But you know, I, I do applaud what you have said, and which is what a lot of industry players yes. have said as well. Well, all right. We'll take our final story. The family of the late Herbert Wigwe, group CEO of Access Bank, have announced funeral rides of the CEO, his wife, 
Chizoba Wigwe and son Chizi Wigwe, scheduled to commence on Monday, March 4th, 2024. Herbert, his wife, and son died on Friday, February 9th in a helicopter crash in the United States. The family in the announcement said that Herbert was a pillar of strength and has always guided them with his kindness, generosity, and unwavering love, and that Chizoba was a wonderful wife and mother who dedicated her life to supporting her family while their first son, Cheesy brought laughter and light to all who knew him. They went on to state that their absence leaves a void that can never be filled, but that their memories will continue to inspire and guide them through the difficult times. While in a program made available to Arise News, the six-day burial ceremony of the Wigwes will begin with a celebration of the professional legacy of Herbert Wigwe at the Echo Hotel in Lagos on March 4th and will end with an outing service at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Lion of Judah Parish in Ishopo, Ikwere, local government area of River State on March 10th. The lives of Cheesy and Chizoba will be celebrated in separate ceremonies scheduled for March 5th at the Echo Hotel in Lagos before a night of tributes a day later at the same venue and then a combined funeral and private interment service scheduled for March 9th. There will also be a combined service of songs which will be held on March 7th at the RCCG Resurrection Parish in Lekki followed by a Christian wakekeeping. souls continue to rest in peace. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.